Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Wednesday, June 7th, 5.54 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we've changed it from large cap uptrend to uptrend as we're absolutely getting the buy-in, the bullishness that we've been looking for from mid cap and small cap stocks. More rotation today. We got a lot of participation from value stocks that had been, uh, whereas with the big caps, they had been focused on uh, the AI tech related stocks. Today was about uh, sector rotation out of those stocks and into the other non-growthy uh, sectors within the S&P 500. This is why we're big advocates of having a, a, a big uh, base, a big ballast of the portfolio of the S&P 500, because when these types of rotations occur, they all occur within the S&P 500, money flowing from value to growth and vice versa, money flowing from growth, uh, certain sectors into other sectors. It all happens within the S&P 500. That's why the S&P 500 is tough to beat if you've got a, uh, a value bent or a growth bent and either of those are not in favor. Getting the broad index uh, covers it all and we use SSO primarily. That's a two times levered ETF to take advantage of that and then uh, get uh, leading stocks and leading sectors when the market is acting well to provide some alpha. So let's check the trend gauge over here. Leaders bullish, short term, multiple closes above the 21 for all the indexes now. Uh, for a while it had been the Dow, mid and small, not joining the party. We've got everything above the 21. We've also got everything above the 50. So upgrade there from neutral to uptrend on the 50-day moving average that's our intermediate term trend long term by the end of the week if uh, all indexes close above the 200-day moving average we'll be able to go to uptrend there also kre uh, regional banks having another good day so we're one step closer to taking off uh, kre from the avoid that's kind of a disclaimer there. We would still recommend staying away from anything commercial real estate, uh, especially office building related as people do not want to go back to the office after COVID. So what happened today? Rotation definitely intens uh, intensified and broadened, as I said, into gr in, from growth into value from growth into mid and small. It continues. It started on Friday. Here are the numbers on the day, RG8 up 0.31%, but very bifurcated within the RG8, like the, the IBD 50, which has load, uh, loading <laughs> leading growth stocks was down 2%, while the growth half of the small cap uh, S&P 600 was up 2.3%. So some big bifurcation there. And it's just really the leaders taking a break and um, they're entitled to do that. They ran up pretty hard over the last two weeks, and it's time for, for some regression to the mean. This is why, this is why we'd, we've held on to our SQQQ for a day like today. We'll talk about that when we get to the tail of the tape. S&P 500 down 0.38%, but RSP, the equal weighted, up 0.74%. So for a while, RSP was uh, big time lagging. The market cap weighted getting its revenge today as we broadened out and that broad strength is good for the overall market nasdaq 100 leading 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 today not today down 1.7 percent second straight day uh, of being the laggard yesterday it paused today it sold off dow up three tenths of a percent mid caps up 1.5 russell 2000 up 1.8 global diversified 60 40 stock and bond down 0.53, both foreign stocks and uh, foreign bonds. The broad index is on both, down about a half percent today. In-house growth protection, we took a hit. We had the hedge. Uh, it worked today, but it didn't cover everything that we had as there was a broad pullback in the leaders that we've been focused on. In-house down 1.1% on the day. We'll go to the tail, 
uh, tail of the tape in its weekly chart wins. They will take a look at the 21 over 21 list on a weekly basis. Let's dive right into it. Here's the S&P 500. You can see uh, four straight closes within a percent of each other. Uh, let's go to a 30 minute chart here. Uh, you can see one, two, three, four, four closes. All since we broke above this 4230 resistance. So we're consolidating two days up three days of consolidation, two of those three consolidation days, we tried to break above 4,300 and uh, have been unable to do it. Recall the struggle that the market had getting above 4,200. Uh, you're you're going to see something highlighted when we get to the tail of the tape that I want to point out. Uh, but pretty oversold now on the S&P 500 on the 30 minute and also on the 60 minute. And this is, uh, if, if you look at the RSP, this is going to look a little bit different. Uh, so you can see how that is overbought now because we're broadening out the rally on the S&P 500. You can see this break above this 144 area, uh, still not above the May 1st highs back to the S&P 500. Where are we relative to those May 1st highs on the broad market? Well above it. Uh, and again, that's been because of all the money flowing into the big seven tech. They, uh, most of them took a break today. Uh, Tesla really the only one that did not take a break today. Uh, so there's the S&P 500 oversold on the 60 minute back to the daily chart. Nice tight consolidation here above the breakout level. Uh, let's go to the NASDAQ 100. Massive relative strength for one, two, three, four, five weeks. It, it doesn't go forever. You know that it never goes forever. Relative strength lagging today, close below the ADMA. It's actually bounced right at the 10 simple moving average, which is at 348.50. We don't show it on our charts, but we monitor it when we're coming. Anytime we're coming into the ADMA, uh, technicians want to know both the 8E and the 10S, and we bounced at the 10S today. Uh, we'll see if we've got further downside tomorrow, maybe a pullback to the 21, or if uh, that's enough of the rotation and things will kind of settle out uh, somewhere in the middle. But uh, NASDAQ still extended from 6.9% uh, above the 50-day. Now, nowhere near, you know, we hit 10% a couple of days ago, 3% uh, off of that as the slope on the NASDAQ 100 continues to go up. Uh, at a pretty extreme pace. You can see now the 21 day is above the breakout area. This is the NVIDIA gap up day on 525 after earnings after hours the, the Wednesday night before. And the 21 day moving average has made it above that breakout level. So some good stuff there. Let's go to the Dow. Money flowing back into the Dow today, uh, showing some relative strength. Uh, pulled back, bounced at the 50-day yesterday. Just putting a nice little handle in here before it makes another run at 34,000. Now to the the recent stars of the show, starting last Friday, uh, mid caps and small caps. Big move up above all this resistance at 450 for mid caps on Friday. Nice pullback inside day on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Follow through to the upside, putting some distance between price and this 460 breakout level. We talked about that last night about how we wanted to maintain that. Well, we're putting some distance between it now. Uh, running into some resistance over here now, right around this 470 level. You can see how this served as uh, 470 to 475 served as resistance before we broke out, pulled back, tried to hold the breakout. This is where the bank, regional banking crisis kicked in and we broke back below that area. But now uh, we are mid caps have reclaimed it all, uh, all of the uh, sell off due to the regional banking crisis. Uh, we basically are right there now before that first day sell off that happened on March 9th. Now to small caps IWM, we've reclaimed it there too. Uh, same situation, blast above the 200 day moving average on Friday, inside day on Monday. Monday, digesting that move, two strong days, getting pretty extended to the upside. Look at the 60-minute stochastic uh, on IWM, uh, pretty far up there. You can stay above there. Uh, we were above, we're above there for about two days now, but normally that's a, 
out the limit before you start pulling back a little bit. We've been using this uh, signal quite a bit more lately. Uh, so IWM, big move up. Wouldn't be surprised if it started to go sideways for a while. But all in all, this is a really good sign for the overall market that we're broadening out into value sectors. <laughs> <clears throat> the bears just can't say that it's seven stocks that are holding up the market anymore because that money starting on Friday rotated into different sectors uh, as uh, the big seven take a little bit of a rest, excluding Tesla. That's continuing to, to power higher. Let's go to the VIX. And another, okay, no fear here, uh, another uh, lower low, closing low. Uh, it's it's a, a bit uncomfortable from where I sit, sit seeing how this goes lower. But, um, you know, it, it's it's keeping in line with the reduced volatility overall on the S&P 500, and that's what it's designed to track. Let's go to the dollar, UUP. Uh, it, the, the dollar gap down to start the day and then trended higher all day and you can see the gap down and we sold off, uh, but strong into the close starting pretty much right after the open, uh, reverse action for gold and gold stocks. Here's GLD, uh, gap down, made a higher high and then a hard sell down, down 1.2% on the day GDX, same thing made a higher high outside negative reversal outside negative reversals all over the place gold not just gold and gold stocks but all over uh tech leading recent leading tech stocks today uh and outside negative reversals when you make a higher high and then make a lower low and it's the reversal of an inside it's the opposite of an inside candle let's look at slv silver down 0.65 percent uh let's uh flip out well rsp i showed that how about qqew uh equal weighted nasdaq down 1.05 percent still down but holding this breakout this is a, a broader index pulled back on lighter volume today we'll show rsp one more time uh to make the the uh, the the equal cap equal weighted cap uh aficionados happy let's go to bonds now bnd Pretty big movement in bonds today to the downside, which means yields higher. Bonds up generally, uh, prices higher, uh, not generally good for the overall market. Uh, so there's the broad market, broad bond market down 0.56%. TLT, the long bond, down 1.48%, not making lower lows. Remember, this 100 area has been uh, support every time we've pulled back into it. Uh, we break below that. Uh, I sense that there might be uh, some impact carrying over to uh, to the uh, stock market, but we don't predict. We in, we we weigh the odds. Weight of the evidence is what Stan Weinstein called it. Weigh the evidence and um, constantly reevaluate that evidence. Here's TYX, the 30-year making higher highs. That 4.0 level has been resistance and TNX, the 10 year, uh, making a, a four day rally now, basically recaptured everything from that four day sell off. Uh, finally, Bitcoin, Coinbase, uh, you know, they're being sued by the SEC. They put out a pretty decent uh, rebuttal. You know, they ran their business model by the SEC, got approval before they were allowed to IPO and, um, uh, it, it reacted fairly well. And here's Bitcoin, which uh, was up yesterday, despite that lawsuit, down 2.37% today. Uh, let's check coin really quickly. Up 3%. So uh, gap down, starting to get filled, not filled quite yet. So those are all of the... Um, let me make sure I covered everything. Yes, I did. Those are all the inter asset correlations that we cover. Let's get to the tail of the tape now. Uh, let's update this. Uptrend, yep. Okay, so only news of the day, not a, really no economic data, but Yellen was interviewed and she suggests inflation is easing and we, we can have that with a strong labor market and manufacture uh, a soft landing. That will remain to be seen. Uh, the We're up to 28. 
8% now on the chance for a 25 uh, basis point raise. So it continues to tick higher. So the day count, three days of consolidation on the S&P 500 after two days up, uh, obviously big one day down on the NASDAQ 100, eighth day above the ADMA, ninth day above the 21 EMA. Expectations remaining positive as long as the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 stay above the 21-day EMA. We're rejected again at this 4,300 level on the S&P and back below uh, this 349.71 area. Uh, let's see, sectors on the day, uh, regional banks, builders, oils, and the defensive sectors, basic materials, industrials, real estate, and utilities were strong today as well as retail. Dollar, as I said, started down, got stronger. Uh, bond prices down, gold, silver, gold and silver stocks down, software down pretty hard, and XLCKY, those are the three tech indexes. No surprise to see that with the rotation. So in-house, uh, with the rally, we took off our SQQQ. We trimmed uh, DT as our last buy went uh, negative. So cut that for a small loss. And we put two hedges on later in the day. So let's explain this. So NASDAQ 100, initially we pulled back and bounced at the ADMA, got back above 350. Let's take a look at a five minute chart here. This was uh, this area in here when we initially bounced, got back above 350. This is where we got out of SQQQ. Um, and uh, the expectation was that that uh, put in the bottom. The stochastics had been oversold for quite a while, but that's not how the rest of the day rolled out. Uh, we started to roll over again, and when we made a lower low, uh, let's take a look at SOX semiconductors. These were barely positive on the day, but our two holdings, NVIDIA and AMD, uh, got hit pretty hard. Uh, but you can see the gap up on the SOX reversed lower. This is still extended, although it's consolidating. We put a little bit of a hedge on by buying some SOX XS, that's short semiconductor index. And uh, after selling all the SQQQ, we put um, QID back in place for uh, when we broke below the ADMA. Not necessarily expecting a free fall or a pullback to the 21 or even the 50. We ended up resting and bouncing at the 21, but um, with all the stocks, money rotating out of them. Sometimes this isn't just a one day occurrence. Today, money had been uh, kind of flowing out of these since Friday when the first rotation started. Uh, if it intensifies, we've got the hedge on and we can add to it. If it doesn't, uh, we'll take the hedge back off. And um, the, the names are just pulling back into realistic uh, support areas. Nothing really breaking down. In fact, only one stock breaking down and we'll talk about that right now in the 21 over 21 that was cmg and we uh trimmed a little less than half of that today that that's a, a pretty big disappointment let's go to that chart on a daily because um this went from again just like with lulu uh this went from being the biggest holding and really showing relative strength after it's uh or at least strong price action going to a higher high here uh this but then these two days of a negative reversal it was like uh, all the progress just stopped this was the day when uh credit card spending slowdown data came out and that just kind of put the top in for cmg since then price had been going sideways but relative strength had been waning and then today uh it broke below the 21 EMA. So that second buy that we did went negative. We took that off for about a little over a 1% loss. Uh, no big deal, but we wanna see some buying come right back into this. So when price action and negative relative strength get together, we started seeing this with Lulu. We don't want another Lulu. Uh, that's why we'll stick to our stops and the market will take us out. So we trimmed Chipotle, we trimmed DT, I believe they had an investor conf conference yesterday. So first it was downgraded yesterday and it bounced perfectly off the 50 level. Bounced again off the 50 level today, but I didn't like the higher volume. So this last buy that we had went red. We took that off for a, a little over a 1% loss. Uh, still a decent sized position in DT, but uh, a couple of uh, misbehaviors in the portfolio today. And 
uh, will show them, and they were really leading stocks. So uh, Uber down 3% today, so this uh, break over the 40 level. We've come back down and closed below the ADMA, still holding above the 21 just fine. Uh, NVIDIA initially started with a gap up and volume. I was thinking it was going to break back above 400, but it reversed close below the ADMA, still above the low of the gap up day, which is a very critical area. And the high volume close date was 379.80. We closed below that today. That's a bit of a red flag. Uh, so we're keeping an eye on this. We still have um, our, our most recent buy, which we did a couple days ago, is red. Our buy after the gap up at 350 after hours is still positive. And then we've got about 40%-ish gains from uh, what we bought in here. So uh, definitely a leader, just may be time to take a break. How much of a break it's going to take uh, is yet to be determined. AMD, uh, also a great day yesterday on an upgrade, but gave it all back today. You hate seeing that. Uh, and the volume was higher than it was yesterday. So breaking back below that 120, our last two 1% buys on this are underwater. We won't uh, we won't let something that uh, damage the portfolio. So if we have to sell, we have to sell. But we'd like to hold on and uh, give it a little bit of room. And that's why we bought the Sox S today as a little bit of a hedge against the NVIDIA and the AMD holdings. So a couple other leaders that got hit, um, Google and Microsoft and Meta. I mean, they're just hitting the big seven now. Uh, outside negative reversal on Google broke the eight, still above the 21. Here's Meta, uh, not an outside negative reversal, but a, a weak and then breaking the ADMA. And then Microsoft down 3%, not an outside negative reversal, but uh, it made its high a couple of days ago, still above the 21. Uh, and that's why we put the Q, we had the SQQQ to hedge these. When we saw the bounce today, we thought the selling might be over, but it got a little bit worse. So we put the QID back on and we'll see how uh, this plays out. Tesla, on the other hand, acting just great. Uh, gap up close near the bottom of its range. A lot of, I mean, very clear accumulation uh, with Tesla, but it's entitled to pull back too. So where are we now on the tail of the tail? So those uh, we reduced our overall beta today uh, with the with the portfolio changes and bottom line for the day rotation intensifies large value mid and small caps lead tech leaders hit uh, and what I have highlighted is this 4196 level tomorrow will be over 4200 on the S and P 500 remember how difficult it was to get above 4200 well this 21 EMA gives us another level of support at this 4,200 level. If we get back to it, that's a percent and a half below, 1.7% uh, below the 21, that'll be over the 4,200 level tomorrow and give us another level of support should we pull back to there, which is very realistic that it happened and it would be a normal pullback. Wouldn't feel good, but it would be normal in uh, the broad scheme of things. So it's weekly chart Wednesday now, let's hit the um, 21 over 21 and we'll go to the weekly charts and you'll see that everything looks pretty fine, but some of these were extended, they're entitled to take a break and uh, a harsh candle on the daily chart doesn't necessarily translate into a harsh candle on the weekly chart. So let's start looking at them. Very normal pullback uh, on Microsoft. Remember this 340 level, we're coming into resistance from uh, late last year, or actually December 2021. Uh, normal pullback for Meta. Normal pullback for uh, NVIDIA. Also Uber, consolidating after that breakout. AMD, don't like to see the reversal. Uh, but this was a big week up, 20% in one week. We're entitled to retrace some of that. Chipotle, this looks perfectly normal, but it is a break below the 21, which is a minor change in character. But note the relative strength uh, has been lagging for three weeks on this. Dynatrace, normal retracement after the breakout. Tesla, strong, 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 four weeks up now. Google, normal consolidation don't like the outside negative reversal but uh, still in the scheme of things it's normal action 
chat. This is the uh, ETF that we got into. It's a normal pullback today. All the other chat ETFs uh, pulled back today also around uh, two plus percent uh, normal action there too. IWM, we have this on here because we're long TNA and that just looks great. NASDAQ 100, all, we have this on here because we're short via QID. Normal pullback on the weekly SOX, normal pullback since we're long SOX S. Race, bounced off the 50-day moving average, still uh, completely normal action there. DraftKings, pulling back once it hit that pivot plus 20% level. Uh, intuitive Surgical, just really going sideways, relative strength weakening a bit over the last two weeks. Celsius, uh, it's very such a big move that it's kind of tight here because we've got this logarithmic chart here, but uh, still acting great. SMCI is a beast. ELF, second week of a consolidation after the earnings up move. Live Nation, nice tight action uh, after its move up. Palantir, big negative reversal today, but one of the strongest stocks in the market. Toll Brothers, these home builders continue to defy everybody saying that uh, nobody's buying homes. Really, nobody's buying existing homes because people can't get out of their low interest mortgages to have to move into something else. Monday, big down day today, uh, but it's it's for now, it's a failed breakout revisiting the pivot. And there was some serious volume on the breakout. So uh, that's one we're actually eyeing for an entry along with Pan W pulling back to the pivot. Pivot we're eyeing this for an entry, uh, as well as Elf. Uh, those are the three that I'm going to be focused on tomorrow, and that's going to wrap it. So as always, love to hear from you. My email is DonnaRiveraAsset.com. The phone is 855 Real Wealth. That's 855-732-5932. If you like our approach, called Grotection, growing assets during market up uptrends, protecting them during downtrends. And that's primarily when we're under the 200-day moving average because that's where all bear markets occur. We're firmly above that now. Markets just broadening out, which is overall bullish, but not bullish for uh, the recent leaders today. But again, nothing out of the ordinary. And that's going to wrap up Wednesday, June 7th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset telling it like it is. Just the facts here at Revere. You might not like them, but they're facts. We don't make predictions. We tell what's actually going on in the market, weight of the evidence, and react accordingly. Thanks for listening and have a great day.